up YouTubers um, we're gonna do a video today here about more flaws uh, that could be in your case you know whatever case you might end up you know getting into any court case well really the first thing you should do is try to discover you know what flaws there may be and if you see my last video I went over like doing an affidavit that they're not gonna rebut and, and uh, you know and it's gonna cause you to win well in this video here <clears throat> I want to point out a very crucial and important step doing a freedom of information or a FOIA some people call it for short when you do this freedom of information yes when you get a court case you can put in a freedom of information to everybody involved and stop and think about this if you've seen any of my other videos you probably call me the basic man because it really is the basics that people should be doing and, and they're very simple things really you do a little bit of investigation you'll find out how to do a Freedom of Information Act you do this Freedom of Information to all the parties and you get them to answer questions and they're supposed to release the information it should be public I mean if you do a Freedom of Information that's what it's for so you're asking several things which puts you in a leading contractual position if you will when you're asking the questions then you're really the king, the king uh, to quote uh, Brandon and Jack and those guys if you know them or if you've ever heard any of their videos brilliant brilliant stuff and brilliant men um, and everybody has to learn from somebody so hopefully you're viewing me and you're learning from me and you will go study now you do this Freedom of Information Act and there's a few points that you you probably need to list and you need to uh, you know uh, the requirements that, that you're requiring well <clears throat> I've got a few notes here um, how does the court has sub have subject matter jurisdiction the Freedom of Information Act you can request this you can request all this um, does, is the complaint defective in other words are the people involved what's their qualifications what it, what gives them the right to be involved in this dog and pony show oh, did I say that oh. um, you know they might it might not be brought by the proper party um, you see what I'm saying you, you know you want to look to see if any kind of paperwork that came to you or anything they might give you have the correct dates or have any dates at all you know uh, or signatures or seals things that are supposed to be there now what now when you request these things and you look for those things you know you might file a notice that it, it on its face it doesn't have it doesn't have a signature it's not valid you know they don't have jurisdiction you could go then and make a notice to the court that there's a defect you can you can and it, and it could be file rule 12b6 you know failure to state a claim upon which relief can be granted I mean that's just one thing um, you know and there's many many others um, you know is it the real party in interest is it really the person that's supposed to be bringing the claim you know and this probably deal with mortgages and uh, you know just a whole bunch of things uh, you know you you demand the qualifications of all the parties so each party when you send them the freedom of information it should list in there please enclose in this freedom of information the qualifications your bond information and and things like that so these are this these are just another avenue and you can pick this apart and figure out what you want to put in your freedom of information request and you send that to these people you know so they have to sign for it and, and you do this immediately when a case starts you know I mean you get a traffic ticket and you're going to court Thursday and it's Tuesday it's going to be difficult to do this you know uh, unless you go hand it to the parties before court which wouldn't make a whole lot of sense you want to use the authority of the registered mail or the certified mail depending on which one you use going through the post office because that is very relevant that it's through the higher jurisdiction when you're requesting these things through your freedom of information so that's a little tidbit for today 
and hopefully you can do a little bit of research and put something like this together. Even a person that, that isn't really educated or taught anything like this could put this together if they had a serious court case uh, in a reasonable amount of time to get this in. You know, they're going to get you to court within 90 days usually. But, you know, if you find out today you got to do this and you get researching and you find these things and you, and you go back and see what I've said and you can put together this Freedom of Information Act, it can be one line or it can be 50 lines. Whatever information you might want to get. You know, are they, um, do, they, do they have jurisdiction? Make them show you in this Freedom of Information Act, every single one of them. How does every one of them have jurisdiction? You know? Uh, is the complaint defective? Do they have the proper qualifications? You know, is it the correct party? Uh, if you can see what I'm saying. You know, and is it the original paperwork? Is it the original signatures? Is, has it been stamped? Has it been dated? Has it been signed? You know, where's the affidavits? You know, there, there's, there's probably four affidavits through a normal court case that's supposed to be there before anything even starts. So you may ask, you know, in your Freedom of Information for any of the affidavits that are attached, that should be attached. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoy the video. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, please donate. Um, and please look at the information below my video uh, for other pertinent information. We'll talk to you soon.